12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. Stories welcomes you to Otherworld Seattle, a story heavy, rules light Call of Cthulhu actual play. And now, our keeper, Wes Otis. Everybody and welcome to Other World Seattle, episode number 20. I am Wes Otis. I have some wonderful players here with me. Let's start with Mac. Hey, I'm Mac, and I'm playing Cecil of who knows what number designation, apparently. Um, mm. Hey, I'm Michelle. I'm not Mac, and uh, <laughs> but I am Maribel, and Maribel is... Um, you know, just trying to deal with things as they come. She's trying not to think too much, too deeply about any of this, or else she'll freak out. Hi, y'all. Jay Holtham here, playing Sean. Um, Sean has so many questions and is probably not going to get any answers. And that's oh, sort of okay, I guess. Hello, I am Saint, and I'm playing Bailey. And, well, let's say Bailey's mood is a little pissed off, a little stressed, a little tired from running up all those stairs. <laughs> the stairs of a spaceship, by the way. A spaceship. Hi, I'm Pooja, and I'm playing Mira. And Mira did not survive getting targeted by a demon and her ghost ex-girlfriend and cultists to be taken out by some goddamn aliens now. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like point directly at Wes if I can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Before we start, please consider supporting the show through Patreon or on coffee.com spelled K-O-F-I. Now, on with the show. This is a great place for a recap. Last week, you all decided to assail the meeting place of the men in black where they have been seen a lot you snuck into the building and you found a classroom that had a really complex basically coordinate thing on it that cecil seemed to just understand and as you search through the building cecil seemed to understand and just know which switches to switch and what to say you found a room that had a sign on it that said bio android computer operating node and you went in and cecil once again just turned on the computer and was face to face with a computer version of bacon the acronym that was there and that's when cecil lost her shit started shooting up the computer you lost 20 points now just so you all know we're not starting at full resolve yet because this is obviously all just happening cecil's parents appeared one seemingly human mother and father seemingly lizard person he was able to shape change back into the 1950s dad that cecil remembered from her childhood lots of stuff started coming back like the fact that she grew up in a really enclosed area with you know in television or a coleco vision or whatever and possibly a Texas instrument. You just remember that bacon was always around you. You also found a tarp with lots of freshly sealed up bacons and cecils that are adolescent age on the floor, covered in a lot of dust, ready to be popped open like a sun kissed. And you escaped, you tackled Cecil, you disarmed her, you shot mother and killed her, you shot father, but he's still up, though very hurt. The men in black seemed not to want to fire and were trying to calm everyone down. And you made a run for the stairs. You are now on the top of the roof. The entire building is vibrating because you realize you're on an actual spaceship that is trying to lift off with Cecil in it for unknown reasons because you shot first and ran later. There is a rickety 
fire escape all the way down the side. You're running towards it and suddenly you hear Bacon's voice behind you. Wait, stop Cecil. Please don't go. Uh, no, would like to go. This is nightmares. <laughs> this is a nightmare factory. This, no, this is, this is your home. Look, I'll explain everything. I know things went wrong with whatever happened to you and our brother outside. I can explain things and, and you don't have him anymore, but you've got me. No, this is not how this works. This is not a, a, a best friend 2.0 situation. <laughs> no, I look, I, I understand that you don't remember anything, but can you really leave not knowing the truth? God, you're an asshole. <laughs> you and Wes. <laughs> uh, give me a resolve check. Okay, let me, let me, oh my God, my current resolve. Oh no. Nope. Okay. Nope, I'm, take me to insanity, baby. <laughs> oh boy. All right, you take another six points. So what that means is you need to roll luck. You want to get under 50. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, Dice. Let's, let's just, I don't know. I just, I'm going to get rid of all the dice that I own. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Because I, I super did not make it. And these, uh, you know, I... I Maybe they're trying to help you with the plot. Maybe, maybe that's what's happening. Maybe <laughs> that, dice. that's why my dice are all the worst. I would like to point out, I never do anything to players. Players do it to themselves. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I mean, whatever helps you sleep at night, but it ain't the truth. No. I sleep very well. Yeah, no. Do you know you what sleep? this is language for? <laughs> Bullshit. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, suddenly Cecil turns around, runs straight for the side of the building. You can either try to stop her, what you guys want to try to tackle her before she goes careening off the side of the building, running away. Yes. She's running towards yes. the fire escape? She, she's fleeing. No, she's no. She's just fleeing. She's just running wildly. Everybody give me a luck roll. Oh, that's how Cecil died. Oh, we're, we're trying to avoid that. Uh, 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 uh. Mm. 51 over my 50. 57 okay. over my 50. Okay. Oh, I got time. a 49 under my oh, right. 50. 49 oh, so you made it. under, you made it. 49, that means you made it. Oh, okay, good. I was like, is this a contested <laughs> thing where, like, Max no. will roll another 10? And, no, like... no. <laughs> I did not make it. All right, so Mira, you try to get in front of her and she hits you really hard, and you both go careening off the side no, of the building. What? She made it, oh. though. So, sorry, Beth. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, off the side where the steps are? Yeah, off the side where the steps are. You guys just watch this. They just both disappear. Well, I run to the side of the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you run to the side of the building, and floating about three or four feet down is the messenger god. And he's holding Mira and Cecil in his arms. And he goes, did you lose these two? You must be more careful with your friends. And if you want to uh, stay on Earth, you better get down that fire escape as quickly as possible. Uh, Don't need to tell me th twice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we run. Thank you as thank we you, run down. You. I just get down yeah, that right fire right. escape. Yeah. Okay, so you're running down the fire escape. You hear the sound of a countdown starting and the messenger god floats down to the ground. When he was in the air, he was actually three times his normal size. But by the time that he gets to the bottom, he's back to his normal size. He lands 50 feet away from where the building is. And you all run towards him in his car. And as soon as you get to his car, you can tell that there's some kind of force around you and there's an explosion and the facade of the building comes crashing down and a wave of debris and dirt hit the outside layer of whatever he's putting up to protect you all. And you watch a large, looks like it's from the 50s, cylindered spaceship 
blast off into the sky. That's when he set down Mira and Cecil. Cecil comes to. He goes, that's the second time I've been able to help you out. You all should be more careful. I'll remember that next time that I'm in that situation. Thank you, well, yes, we for appreciate us it. Out again. Oh, no problem. No problem. Anyway, I need to get going. I've got a lot of things going on. And, you know, obviously you all have a lot of things going on, too. So, you know. Yes. Uh, speaking of, I mean, just before you go, um, one, what should we call you? And, and two, Lilith? What about Lilith? Apparently she's around in town running a gang called the Night Gaunts. Oh, yeah. So you know about that. Yeah, of course. I, I'm very aware of her movements. Are you, are you going to do a thing about that? Do you really want to be a part of it? No, no, that's a good point. Nope, nope, nope. That's great. And uh, what should we call you? A friend. And he turns around and opens the door, sits down, and drives away. Okay. Uh, like, Davis, tell us not to learn a name. A whole body shudder. <laughs> yeah, I think Cecil's legs give out. <laughs> oh my god! I, sh- I mean, Bailey's like everyone's getting on me about the name, and you just straight ask him. <laughs> you straight <laughs> ask him. Was, I would ask, what should we call him? No, Sean, Sean. If he's getting ready to leave and leave us alone, you let him leave. You don't ask him questions. We don't know what his deal is. We don't know who he is. We don't know who he works for. But if the other gods are afraid of him, we should be terrified. But we are here to find information. (laughs) Well, we did pretty poorly at that. Uh, Make me a photography roll, by the way. Bailey. Thank you. Beautiful. So you were able to capture a lot of that on film, including the last bit. Ooh. With bacon on the roof? Bacon and the messenger and god. the messenger mm. god. Ooh. He shows up on film? Y- yeah, you remember thinking. that scene from Galaxy Quest where Guy gets onto the ship and finally just lets out a horrendous scream? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's Cecil right now. Like, there's all this back and forth, and she's on her knees. I think she just shrieks. <laughs> like, Mira is just there, just silently sobbing, because, like, this is, no, no, no more of this. I want to go to the edge of where the ship came. Mm-hmm. Look. Okay. Same. It looks like a nuclear silo. Like, it goes really deep. And it's got all of these different cables and stuff that were ripped off when it set off into the sky. It looks like it's been there for quite a long time. Someone's going to notice this building is gone. And then right when you say that, you hear the sounds of far off sirens. Like those cops. We should go now. We should yeah, go. No, yeah. I don't. We need, we to, need get. to not be here. No so more let's cops. Let's go to family truckster. Yep. You speed off. And where do you guys want to go? I would like to go home now. Yep, yep. Let's go to the mortuary, and then let's go get very hot. (laughs) Yes. I'm down with that. Please and thank you. All right. You go to the mortuary, and what do you want to do there? Just check in and then go back to your apartment, or are you all staying together? (laughs) Well, Mm -hmm. since we know the parents are super cool and all that, perhaps... We can say, hey, uh, this happened. Did you know anything about this stuff? <laughs> Unless Mira stops me. Well, we know Dad knew about the Men in Black, but also, like, I don't want to get the interrogation tonight. Well, listen, we don't have to go home. Let's go to my place. I've got weed. Let's smoke a lot of weed. Yes, I like that plan. Let's do that plan. But if I don't check in, I'll get the interrogation anyway. That's what okay. phones are for. Yeah, you can call Yeah, them. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, you're, you're, you're right. You're smart. I'm. I would just like to. I'll call. Okay. A good night's sleep, and then you can talk. We can yep. ask your parents morning. questions tomorrow. Yep. All right. So you head back over to Sean's place. Sean, you open the door. Herodotus oh. is sitting on your couch, watching Mori Povich with Rodney next to him. They're eating Doritos together. And he goes, friends. It's good to see you. Did you have a a good night? Themis supposed to pick you. Yeah, where's Themis? Yeah, yeah, you know, like Themis didn't get you. I'm I, at this point. I'm like, I don't care. 
Themis did get me. I left and came back. I wanted to see the end of these stories on this box. They oh, never they, end. They, they never end. Oh Go God. home. I don't. I'm, I have to talk to Maribel and figure out the whole. Not today. Oh, okay. I haven't made Go a home. decision yet. I, I don't have a home. This is. Well, that's not my problem. Have you, have you heard about cannabis? No. Would you like to? Sure. All okay, right. let me right, show you all... what to do. We're going to do a thing, okay? And so it'll, be, it'll be like a bonding exercise. Right. Okay, fine. <laughs> that entire pitch sounded way too much like you're initiating him into a cult. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, uh, we're not. Pot smoking montage later. You all have a wonderful night. You fall asleep. You wake up the next morning. Your head's a little bit fuzzy, but you clearly remember enough that you're all still in shock. It is Friday. Tonight is the art show that Emily wants Bailey and Mark to show up to. And you hear the phone ring, Sean. Mm -hmm. And do you pick it up? Yeah, I mean, it's my phone. Sure. Well, I'll just... With what everything going on, maybe you're avoiding it. No, no, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, but that's fine. It's freedom. And he goes, hey, man, so if you have a chance later on today to swing by the farm, I want to talk with you about my plans just so you're not kind of caught off guard. We've made some decisions, but I, you know, phone, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So like, you know, this afternoon, four or five o'clock, come on by, okay? Uh, probably not going to happen. Okay, well, it's... There's a lot going on here. I'm going to need some time. I would recommend that unless there are night gaunts knocking down your door... Right. Just stay at the farm, stay out of the way, and maybe the situation will just resolve itself. Maybe, but, like, I can't really talk about it, but when you have a moment, try to get over here in the next weekend, okay? I'll see what I can do, but I'm also just saying, me to you... Just punker down, and it's possible the situation will just take care of itself. Okay. All right. Well, I'll talk to you soon. That's all right. All right. So go ahead and talk amongst yourself. What do you guys want to do? I want to look at the footage of the god. Yeah, me too. I want to see what we got. All right. Yeah. Bailey is just going to be like, I hate to say it, but I am curious, like, what was going to happen if the lizard guy talked to us so there's i don't know if you guys run into more men in black like maybe that's you know we can still investigate that or something i think they're out i think they left the planet i never know how many Uh, yeah at least this section of it yeah (laughs) if we're watching the footage with the god i'm just gonna say most of this i would hand over to brian at the paper but I think we need to edit out the footage of the messenger God because, oh yeah, I just, I just get a feeling he's not going to want to be made public and we don't want to cross him. Yo, no, we're, we're also not going to show any of the stuff about Cecil. Like, come on. Yeah, I was like, about to say, like, if I if I could hear, I'd like to not. Be <laughs> yeah, we, yes, we're not going to expose I get that. you. <laughs> I get that. I'm just thinking about the bigger picture of all of us dying. Yes. <laughs> Horribly. Yeah, I think yeah, we no. edit out all the Cecil. We keep in Lizard Face. We don't need to show who he's talking to. Mm-hmm. Right. And weird alien math. Well, we didn't have, like, that didn't have, like, a face or anything. It was just, it was just a. No, it, it was a face. It oh, a my face. bad. Bacon my appeared. bad. Yep. Do you want to go to Weirdo Video to do this editing? Because you don't have editing stuff at your apartment. Well, I thought we were just going to. Why am I? You just want to watch it? Yeah, just like to look on the viewfinder. Because I'm just curious, did he show up? Or are we having a thing where it's like, ah, it's a vampire status or it's an invisible thing? You fast forward to the end where you look over the side and you see the camera jostling as you look over the side and then floating there with Cecil and Mira is a really tall creature that reaches all the way down to the ground and its body is this blackish gray and its arms are these huge tentacles that are wrapped around the girls and its mouth is almost the entire size of its body. His head keeps going up into what looks to be like a 
animal tongue of some sort on the video. Mm. Wow. And I need you all to make resolve for checks. Yep. Oh, great. Yeah. Early in the morning. Here we go. <laughs> First resolve of the day. Didn't right, make I made it. it. Thankfully, made it. I made it. All right. Mm-hmm. Didn't make it? Oh, okay. Oh, I did. I did. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yay. 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 The- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Even if you make it, you automatically take three points. Oh, dang. Wow. Because you are seeing something you should not see. Okay. <laughs> Let's definitely uh, not give that to Brian. And also, that does not look cool. If we got hurt, are our, our eyes bleeding or something? Do we have a sensation? Your head hurts very badly and maybe a trickle of blood down your nose. I uh, didn't make mine. I'm sorry that that happened. You take 12 <laughs> points of resolve and you just kind of have a break. Just start <laughs> blubbering, just tears coming down. You lift up your shirt a little bit and you see the imprint of a large suction cup on your stomach. It's all too much. I feel bad about pushing this. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought he wouldn't be in and it'd be like, ooh, ghost. Am I breaking this camera? Am I attempting to break this camera? No, (laughs) you're not. (laughs) You're just freaking out, you know. Just you're crying and realizing that you were yeah. in the yes. tentacles of a very large creature. Yeah. All right. So after Mira finally settles down, what you have a, uh, this video, if you cut out a lot, it's not very long. It's still going to be better than anything else he has. Yeah. As far oh, as yeah. that is. So if, if we need to edit this, we need to go to weirdo video, which might be being staked out by the night gods. I remember I had some sort of setup, but it wasn't as full as the weirdo video one was. Would the strange have a setup? Oh, yeah. Yes, most definitely. All right, let's go there instead. Okay. And just keep him out of the room. Yeah. Say, hey, we got some footage. We got some interesting things. We're going to try to edit it together to a usable state. All right. That's going to take a while for you all to do. And that's pretty much a Bailey and uh, Sean thing. Do the other three want to do anything? I go get everyone coffee. Okay. (laughs) No, we just need it. (laughs) Do you want to come to hang out at my parents' house and they'll make you food and, you know. And, and, And try and think about the fact that my... Life is hopefully not just a gigantic lie. No, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. I mean, let's be real. Like, the upside to having my parents is my mother talks so much that you won't be able to think anything. Uh, you know, that would be great right now. This, this whole thinking thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to give up on it. Yeah, I think uh, for Lent, I've decided to give up thinking. <laughs> that You know, I, I might... I almost said I might convert, but I don't even want to joke about that at this point. So, yes, parents... <laughs> Uh, at least yours aren't potentially horrible lizard people and or robots or aliens. So that we know of. No, I do not like that answer. <laughs> uh, no, mine are just monster hunters and have been since long before I was born. All right. So you ha- you two head over. I will say this about editing this particular thing. The more that you look at the messenger god. Oh, yeah. No, not looking at the messenger god. Yeah. It's if you if you watch the footage too much, even fast forwarding through it, it will make you sicker and sicker. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, the good thing is it's the end of the tape and we're not using any of that. So you're just cutting it and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We are just, we know where to stop. Like, yeah, no roof stuff. Yeah. When Mira and Cecil go over the side, we are done looking at the tape. All right. So Mirabelle, You are at the local corner Starbucks, which is not as big as it is now because it's just starting to grow. And you're in line and this woman walks up behind you. She's got really deep, dark olive skin, long black hair and these piercing green eyes. And she says, hi, I was wondering if you were the one they call Mirabelle. My name is Lilith, and I'm looking for your friend, Sean. 
Um, I don't know where he is right now. I'm just getting some coffee. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. What can we get you? Uh, and I start just saying an order, but I leave one coffee out. Okay. She goes, oh, well, if you see him, let him know that I have a deal that would make everybody happy and alive. And she puts down a hundred dollar bill to pay for your coffee and then just walks out. And then you hear the sound of motorcycles pulling away from the building. I ordered the third coffee. <laughs> now that she left. And she's paying for it, so. And some pastries and you know, <laughs> okay. bottle of Jack. And uh, <laughs> I wish Starbucks had yep. Irish in their coffee yep. a little bit. <laughs> so you can get all that stuff but the alcohol. Let's flip over to Mira and Cecil. You enter the room. It's probably midday at this point. Mira and your mom comes out and dad comes out. And goes, oh, I don't see any any bruises or anything. How did it go? Not physical, at least. I mean, some physical, but like, you know, it went badly. But Cecil's hungry. I was hoping maybe like we could just have some lunch. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll help. I'll help Papa with whatever's downstairs at the moment. Sure. Cecil, come and help me uh, make some lunch. How about that? Oh, okay. So you and your dad go downstairs, and there's this probably 70-year-old man on the table getting prepped for a funeral. Your dad turns to you as you stand next to the 70-year-old dead man, and he says, "Are, are you really okay? No, no close to death kind of thing and even closer to something that i don't think i ever should have seen yeah that can happen that's why it's dangerous that's why we were hoping that you wouldn't have the ability to sense this kind of stuff well apparently it likes to save my life and i like lift up my shirt to show him the bruise on my stomach (laughs) that looks like a suction cup what what did that um a god that can kill gods He goes, I feel like we should go and try to find out more about this. The other gods are afraid of it. More reason to have the knowledge to know how to deal with the situation, right? I mean, he's helping you so far? Whatever did that? Yeah. But you get the feeling he could turn at any moment. Not just the feeling. We got the warning. Don't be too interesting. Don't be too boring. Don't attract his attention. Except we didn't do anything to attract its attention in the first place. Then obviously he thinks that you're of some value for whatever reason. He's here probably because of Lilith. He goes, well, like I said, you either live in a perpetual state of not knowing and hoping that everything turns out right, or you do research and see just how fucked you are. I understand both. I know the reasons why people would do both. I avoid God's... I just deal with vampires. Lilith is a problem. That must be nice. Um, I think we're past me shutting my eyes and pretending that this is all going to be okay and go away. Yeah, it's not going to, unfortunately, honey. I'm sorry. So, research it is. Well, after lunch, let's head over to the library and see what we can find. Don't ask Cecil what happened, Daddy. I could tell she's frail. It was rough. It was, it was the worst for her. But don't pry. I'm not going to pry. That's your mother's job. (laughs) Tell Mama not to pry either. Has she ever listened to me? There was a time before I was born. I don't know what happens then. (laughs) (laughs) Things never change. And he gives you a big hug. Says, look, let's fill in this guy's face and head up for lunch. Okay. So you start working on this corpse. And let's flip back over to Cecil and Mir's mom. Mir's mom is getting a bunch of stuff together. Yes. Cecil, uh, you seem really stressed. Are you going to be okay? Depends on what your definition of okay is. Well, you did lock us in the basement a few days ago, so... I was possessed at the time, thank you very much. (laughs) I understand that, but, you know, I'm worried about you. You seem to be going through a lot. You know, it's funny, that's like the advice that usually comes up around puberty, but, like, I, I don't know. Things are just, it's a weird time for me right now. Mm. Uh, My whole life might be a lie. You know, the usual, it's fine. I understand. That can be a lot to deal with. Just let us know if you, if you need to get away. Like, you know, 
take a trip outside of Seattle for a while. We can get all of you out of here for a while. This isn't going to be a thing I can get away from. There's, It's all in my head and without answers. And I'm a pretty... Uh, a pretty certain, uh, pretty high percentage that I'm never going to get those answers either, which I'm not sure which is the better thing. Answers or no answers. I don't know. I used to think answers were the right answer, but uh, uh, maybe not this time. It really depends on, I guess, the situation. I wish it was easy to answer that in itself. <laughs> you do not want to know the situation. She hands you a plate of food. You could tell she's trepidatious because, you know, a past things, even though it wasn't you. And after a little bit, Mira comes up and all of you sit around the table and Mira's father says, uh, well, after lunch, I think we're going to head over to the library and do some research uh, just to connect some dots. Library sounds nice. I like, I like library. Library is a place that I would like to go. All right. So let's flip back over to the other three. You are editing the the picture when Mirabelle comes back in with the coffee and assorted Danai, Danish. Yeah. You know, what do you want to do, Michelle? Um, so I made a new friend today. That's oh, dear. Coffee shop. Um, her name is Lilith. Oh, that is definitely not good. <sighs> yeah, she uh, she said she has a deal that where everybody comes out good and alive, but she wanted to talk to you, Sean. Oh, that really doesn't feel good at all. Oh, that feels really yeah, good. Yeah, she knew mine too, which wasn't fun. Mm. <sighs> These gods and their Rolodexes. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but she didn't know where we were, right? No, she asked me where you were and I said I hadn't seen you well I appreciate that I don't know if she believed me or not but you know well she's not here true what do you think I mean I say regarding this you need to talk to freedom because he may have an insight um but I'm also I'm scared of making a deal with Lilith and pissing off our other friend oh yeah definitely don't want to do that the problem is freedom doesn't want to talk on the phone which would mean driving out to his farm Perhaps before we do that, we could call in Themis, see if she has an idea. Not even call in, call her. But uh, I mean, we do have a number. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking she'd be the most knowledgeable at this point. That seems she's on our side. I mean, there's also Mira's parents. So they seem to know a bunch. Yeah. So demon or. Zombies? I forgot what, I'm, what we're talking demons, about. Demons, we, demons. Demon, we think it's demons. Demon, zombie, yeah. demon yeah. monster. You haven't seen spookies. them without those helmets on, we so not, you no. don't know Just what they are. bad guys. Yep. Lilith is associated with demons. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, let's, let's bring in our most powerful ally to at least discuss how to talk to a, to a bunch of demons. Yep. All right. All right. So you want to call her up? Yeah, I'm going to call her from here. Well, I'm glad to hear from you all, meaning you're still all alive, correct? So far. So far, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And what, what do you recommend? There's no good answer to this. And it's so the answer I'm going to give you is not one you're necessarily going to like, but you need to find a way out of the situation, obviously, and it's not going away by itself. If she has a deal for you, at least I would hear her out. Now, I would also be willing to go with you as your lawyer and maybe give you a little backup because as worrisome as Lilith is, she is not as dangerous as the other. That makes, I like that. You being there, I like, because my concern is we walk in there and then she just kills us. And I'm like, I don't want to. Which is valid. I'll go in there with you. And that will at least make things a little bit more even if, if she is trying to just lure you to your death. But I think that it's, you know, what other choice do we have at this point with you? We have to, we have to figure out what's going on. Yep. Nope. That's a good point. Yeah. So, um, by the way, we saw that guy again. We saw our friend. Yeah, and he touched two of us. 
not inappropriately for the time, <laughs> but it just letting I know I already know what your reaction is going to be. I just want to let you know we didn't want it to happen. No, he's that's the other thing. If you can somehow negate whatever angle you he feels you have with Lilith, that might make him go away. You know okay. what I mean? Hmm. Like if you're no longer hmm. an asset then he'll get bored and move on. That's good. That's a hope. Right. Or he could get bored and kill us, right? That's the other one? I don't think he even thinks of you enough to kill you. That's great. I okay. Am, I can accept I'm, I'm that. I'm okay to be thought little of it now. Yes. Yep. 100%. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we do this, Themis? I guarantee you that she is outside the building right now. She knows exactly where you are. She's just playing a card. I guarantee you. So, where are you? We're at the Strange right now, the Seattle Strange, so why don't you come here, and then we'll go to the Starbucks, and we'll do this all in the Starbucks. Nice public place. That sounds good. I'll be there in, you know, 30 minutes. Great. We'll see you there. All right, so let's flip over to Mira and Cecil. You guys are in the library, and your dad walks you back past all the main library, and you guys get to a door that says employees only. He pulls out a key and he opens up the door and he walks in and there's rows and rows of steel cages. And inside the steel cages are bookcases with a bunch of books. And he goes, all right, so let's go over here and take a look at the index. We're going to have to look up messenger God first Let's see, that's M. Uh, and tentacles. Are these like standard Dewey Decimal or? Yeah, yeah, everything's Dewey Decimal down here. Wow, I, uh, that's, that's somehow really weird right now. <laughs> <laughs> I find that more terrifying than the rest. <laughs> you have to be able to find the book you're looking for. Uh, give me a library use, both of you. Give me a roll. I'm so bad at this. Uh... <laughs> Make sure you're making checks if you do make stuff. <gasps> All right. So, no, not even close. I got a 78. I got a five. Nice. Wow, that's a critical nice. success. My dice wanted to impress my fake dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Mira's real dad. So you're looking through and they all have little like taglines of like some say, Sorcerer spells, others say things like the gods of the Southern Hemisphere, things like that. And there's one book that just says Messenger God. I would assume that this is the one that we're looking for. All right. So you take the card with the with the note on it and you walk past all of these different books. And at the very back, there is a book that is probably it looks like one of those medieval manuscripts, probably three feet by about two. It's pretty big and it's bound in some sort of flesh. You're not sure what it is. And it looks like it has tattoos all over the front of it like it's been branded just so you know, it's not tight like skin. It actually looks like muscle that's on top of the front of the book. It's actually all the way around it with a big clasp. And all of the muscle has been written on in all of these different languages. And your dad comes back and goes, that's the book that was attached to that card? You tell me, Dewey Decimal System Master. I've seen the Evil Dead. I've seen this before. Let's not. Mm, I just whatever you do, don't read anything out loud. From this looks like a no no book. <laughs> These are all no no books. <laughs> this looks like an extremely bad no no book. Mm -hmm. Well, the answers you want might lie within, or we can walk away. It's up to you two. I can understand. This is definitely a book I don't like pulling off the shelves. I think walking away ceased to be an option when we got in his car the first time. I don't even know anymore. But uh, you know, I just don't want to touch it. I'm not touching that. Okay. What about you, Mira? What's your decision? I mean, that's why we wear gloves, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I have touched things that should be on the inside of a body. <laughs> True. So you pick up the book, 
put it on a little study table nearby and you start to look through it. Each page is this writing slash pictures of different historical events and human experiences as well as alien ones. Each page is a little bit more horrific than the next one as you're going through. Both of you make occult rolls for me. Also, clearly we should have gone to the library right at the beginning. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you walked into the I'm library, said messenger no, God, and then I... handed you a book. <laughs> uh, I made it. Uh, okay. Still. Excellent. All right. Through your research, you both lose five points of resolve just from studying the book. Oh, God. <laughs> and... Because I have so much to spare. I know, me too. I'm like, ah, mother. (laughs) Does this book make you feel crazy? This book's making me feel crazy. The messenger god serves his master, who is a entity that lives at the true center of all reality, way out past where you all live. The name of the messenger god is basically Harbinger, but he also does his own side projects, let's call them. What you figure out from the book is that, like you were told by Themis, all of space is contained within a certain area. It's vast, obviously, and it's expanding, which is what you know of physics, what you've been taught. Outside of that vastness and the expansion, is where this god is from. Your entire realm is small to n- and seems to be his MO is looking for things to keep the boredom away. You don't see much about Lilith, just that for some reason he has run-ins with her, but doesn't seem to be able to destroy her for whatever reason. But there are several mentions of entire cities disappearing and people and gods, other entities folding into different dimensions. Just reading the book gives you a headache. This is over a few hours. Time just disappears. You realize that... This thing comes from a complete and total void. He's from a place with no stars, no planets, and looks at the little blip that is your universe and your knowledge of space as just a small section of what his reality is. Sounds like he needs some uh, some healthier hobbies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe we should introduce him to TV, too. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's the information that you get. You're dealing with <laughs> flipping back over, unless you have something you want to say. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so Maribel, Sean, and Bailey meet up with Themis in the coffee shop. And Themis has somebody else with her. It's a man. Looks sort of like Zeus, but not completely. Has a gray pallor to his skin and red eyes. And she goes, uh, this is Zeus's brother's Hades. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice Hello. to meet you all. Themis asked me to come along because of uh, your situation. Thank you. Appreciate it. We appreciate yeah. it. Uh, definitely need all the backup. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Pomegranate? Mm. No, no thanks. Thanks. I'm good. All right. Doesn't go well with coffee. Okay. Right then, Lilith comes in. She sees Themis and Hades sitting next to you. She walks over. Sean and Maribel and Bailey. I didn't realize uh, you had company with you. Well, Themis is our legal advisor, our lawyer. And so we figured if there was a deal, we should keep her in the loop on it. Okay. So... I know that there's a particular god who's been dealing with you lately that is very dangerous. And I want to take over the Pacific Northwest drug trade. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I need freedom to acquiesce at this point. 
and give me what I want. But he's been very slippery. He's been keeping me at arm's length. And frankly, with my friend in town, I haven't really wanted to make any big moves. Mm -hmm. Because I do not want to be caught in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. So, I have offered Freedom a deal. The deal is this. He sells me his share, he moves out, and I take everything over. Now, where do you come in to this, Sean? Well, he's on the fence. He just thinks my name's Lilith. He doesn't understand everything going on. And if you were to talk with him and help him see the benefit in leaving and selling the business to me, I mean, I'm offering him millions of dollars. I'm offering him a lot of money and I'm letting him live. I'm letting you all live because I don't want to draw attention to myself at this point. Mm -hmm. But I need your help. May I ask a question? Sure. I mean, isn't the drug trade kind of a a petty thing for someone of your immortal stature? (laughs) It's a long game. And there's no way that you can just partner with freedom. Let him continue to live here and sell weed and cut you in. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. With your experience of being around people like ourselves, Mm -hmm. do you really think it's a good idea for Freedom to partner with me? Do you think that him and his wife would survive? This is the safest thing for him to do, is to sell to me, let gods be gods, and let mortals do whatever mortals like to do. This is his way out. I understand, but you're offering him a way out that he hasn't asked for because he doesn't know all the details. That's where you come in. You help him see the light, whatever that light is. And what's, not to make this awkward, but what's in it for us? Well, you're his friend and he trusts you. Uh Uh-huh. So, again, once I'm out of the picture, more than likely the messenger God's out of the picture. And then more than likely you get to go back to at least a semi-normal life if you want. It's an opportunity to get out. That's what I'm offering. Mm -hmm. And the reason you haven't just killed me, killed Freedom, killed all of us, killed everyone in this cafe. Right. Is because you don't want to piss off the messenger. Well, that and you're sitting next to a Titan in a Hades. Yep, I get that. I could kill you all, but they might be able to take me down So I'm using diplomacy to work this all out with you. And I I get this diplomacy, but the diplomacy does work both ways. Okay. Because as it it says to me, it seems to me right now we're at a bit of a standstill. Well, what do you want? If I tell you to go kick rocks, you're, we're all, it's all bad. What I want, I want you to just leave freedom alone. I need his business. Well? Wait, can we do a little conference? Lilith. You're so beautiful. Can <laughs> can we do like a little comfort? I totally, yeah, I sure. just, do we, let's get, let's, okay. Let's confer. Thank you. She walks off and lets you all talk. Okay. This is an amazing deal. We convince Freedom to get millions of dollars and move to another ranch where he can also grow weed if he wants to, because it's millions of dollars. And if we get in a contract, Themis, you can, you can help me on this. Contracts, I think demons love them. And I don't know. If you need a special paper, pen, blood, but I, is that, can we hold her to her word? Is there something like that? Because obviously she could murder us all. Yeah. But like, I'm, it's technically a great deal. I see that, but I'm very curious as to why she says she's offered this deal. She has offered millions of dollars to Freedom and he has said no. Themis goes, well, at least talking with Freedom and finding out why He's apprehensive about taking a large sum of money. I believe her when she says that she does not want to tangle with the messenger god, and that is why she's trying to be diplomatic about this. All right. All I guess I'm trying to say is that we have a little bit of leverage because of exactly that. Right. And all I want for her, like, all I want for her is to just leave freedom alone. I don't know if she's going to do that. I mean, she's obviously got a plan and freedom's in the way. She does, but I don't know. There's a part of me that's like, call her bluff. 
I don't think it's a bluff, Sean. Do you really want to call her bluff on it, though? I mean, what happens if she decides, you know what, if I can't get what I want, burn it? I mean, she is a mother of all demons, literally. I, I'm, I'm saying at the very minimum, talk to Freedom. Let's go talk to Freedom and find out what's going on. Yeah, before we tell her to kick more rocks. I am always a plan of kick more rocks, but, you know. I have a question for Mira and Cecil. You have this information. It takes you a few hours. It's getting late. Do you want to go back to the mortuary or do you want to try to meet up? You're not quite sure where the rest of them are. Are you going to try to track them down or are you going to go back to the mortuary? Uh, I'm torn. Like, I want to check in with them, but you're right. We don't know. Well, I think the assumption would be that they're at the, the paper, but yeah, we could try calling over there beforehand because we do know that uh, people don't always stay where you think they're going to. True. Yeah, you call over there and Brian says, yeah, they, they left already. Mm, I, did they happen to mention where they were going? Something about speaking with uh, some woman named Lilith and uh, his old boss, Freedom. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I appreciate the information and uh, have a have a nice day. No problem. What do you guys want to do with that information? So I, I'm not sure if I'm ready to, to go full tilt back into the crazy, but I, I hope they're being safe. I think we have information that they have to have if they're dealing with Lilith. Yeah, unfortunately, I I agree with you. I mean, at the very least, if we call, oh, it's so late now. Like, um, we can try Sean's if they're not there. Yeah, well, I don't think they would have met back up at his place. No, I was just wondering if they were done already. I guess. Um, sorry, my head hurts so bad. Yeah, I mm, that book that book was it was definitely a difficult read, and yeah, I'm not feeling up to snuff either. <laughs> Girls, I think. Your friends will get in touch with you. Let's just go back home. At least they'll know where to find us. Exactly. Okay. Maybe take something for these headaches. Yeah, so let's go back. So you all head back to the mortuary. During all this time, you show up at Freedom's, Bailey, Maribel, and Sean with Hades and Themis. And you meet in the main room. Sally's there kind of arguing a little bit with Freedom about the situation. And he goes, look, I spent 30 years building this up and I don't want to just give it away to some woman with a bunch of thugs. That's that's your whole reason. She's offering you millions of dollars. I, it's not my whole. Well, you don't understand. You you're millions just of dollars. It's not just about the money, man. It's about the lifestyle. You could have that lifestyle wherever you want, dude. You'll have millions of dollars. I already have millions of dollars, Sean. I own five pot farms all over the Pacific Northwest. I, I already have a lot of money, man. Then cash out. Cash out, dude. Retire. Like, what would I do? Like, I don't know. Watch movies, get high, grow weed in some other state, Humboldt County. I don't know. Yeah. Go to Central America and grow weed. Yeah. You know, in the jungle. Thailand. Freaking Paris. Get some champagne weed. And Sally goes, well, you know, you could finish writing that script you've been writing. That sounds great. Because no, 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 no. Then he thinks for a second. He says, look, <sighs> all right. If you all think that it's such a good idea to sell and yeah, 25 million is a, is a lot of money. Yes, it is. But man, you got to understand it's about the lifestyle. It's we're not we're not corporate. This isn't corporate. Dude, this is whatever you want. Listen, I gave you the benefit of the doubt that maybe you had a good reason or maybe there was something. But no, just take the money and run, dude. Yeah, dude, if you don't have like a child buried there, like just leave. Just leave. Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, look, Sean, can I pay you to help us get down there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, I'll take that. All right. You're into films and stuff. Maybe you can help me with my script. That'll be great. You know what? Let's do that. We'll take the road. We'll take a road trip down to California and figure out where we're going to go, man. Let's just but just get your crap and go, because I'll tell you, Lilith was being real polite. 
but she's got some real bad dudes who will do some real bad things. And the sooner we are out of here, the better for everybody. I guess you're right. It's like not 1969 anymore, I guess. It is not, no. All right, well. All right, Sally, get your shit together. Let's get going. And you guys start to get your stuff together. Bailey and Maribel, Sean is going to head out with Freedom. Oh, I thought this was after we, like, next week or something. No, oh, it's, it's right they now. They got to go now. It's like right now. I'm going to get in this car. Sorry. Uh, here are the keys to Weirdo Video. Bailey, it's all yours. What about Rodney? Welcome to Rodney. I, I, listen, I, listen, I am I am with Freedom on this one. Telling him about it made me feel like, you know what? I'm just going to cash out. This has been great. I need a break and not to, you know, worry about monsters for a little while. So it's not a, it's not really that shocking since this entire time he's been like, I don't want to be in this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, I listen, I'll be back once, you know, everyone goes away. The other people or whatever. Or you can always come find me in Los Angeles, which I'm sure is a very normal Average, peaceful place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, Sean. Oh, man. I'm yeah. Miss you all too. But you know, call me, send me a postcard, write me a letter. If there's ever a way to do electronic mail, that'd be cool too. <laughs> oh, I, I give him a big hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Same. Magically, Lilith shows up mm-hmm. not long <laughs> after all this, and of course, you, you guys sign the papers, and she transfers money and everything else it's pretty late bailey you need to get out of there to get to your date oh my gosh honestly bailey's thinking about standing him up (laughs) well you'd be standing up emily too yeah that's that's the that's what's keeping me going i i'll just make an appearance uh i guess what i'm wearing what i look like is what i look like (laughs) i'm a little sweaty probably Probably smell of sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> so you say goodbye to Sean and you give him a big hug. Bye. Hugs all around. Uh, Maribel, where do you want to go? Do you want to go back to the mortuary where they're probably at? Or do you want to, what, go get Rodney? But well, I guess I got to drop Bailey off for her to get ready. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. And then I'll go to the mortuary. All right. Because Rodney's okay right now. Yeah, Rodney's fine. You go back to the mortuary, and Themis goes with you. Uh, Hades says, goodbye, good luck. You know, I'll see you soon enough. It's like, oh. And drives away in his own car. And yeah, you get back to the mortuary and fill them in on what's happening. Yes, all of it. Blah, blah, blah. But there you go. Sean left? He had to. They had to go right away. I... He's going he's gonna to give us a forwarding number and everything. and But I live at his place <laughs> right now, currently, kind of. So. Oh, well, here's, here's the keys. And the keys to Weirdo Video as well. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I, hmm. And Hieronymus is just going to be around for a while, too, I imagine. So, oh, what is my life right now? Till I, till I make a decision, and I don't know that I want to be uh, in indentured servitude the rest of eternity. Until someone kills you. Yeah, exactly. This just sounds like a really bum deal. I don't know why anyone would do that. Well, Themis speaks up real quick and she goes, look, I've actually talked with Herodotus. We can deal with him later. He didn't quite understand modern sensibilities. We might be able to figure something out, but that's not the most important thing right now. Cecil, Mirabelle, I would say living together might be the best situation. So if you're not going to go back and stay at Sean's old place, maybe Cecil, you can stay with Maribel or stay here, you know, for I'm sure her parents don't mind. Someone's got to take care of Rodney, though. You can pick Rodney up. He doesn't have to live there. He's a ferret. Anyway, (laughs) whatever you all decide is fine. Honestly, I need to move out of my apartment anyway, because um, crime scene true i mean it does kind of add to the aesthetic but why don't we all just look for one big apartment together i mean okay i i have zero income right now and i'm not even sure if i'm entirely a people so (laughs) that sounds great that sounds like a normal thing and i could use normal right now and we can talk to bailey and see if she's down because we get a big enough two bedroom we share rooms and 
Okay. It'll be fun. It'll be like a constant sleepover. <laughs> oh, there'll be so much weed, you have no idea. <laughs> Apparently, compliments of Lilith now. So, great. <laughs> awesome. And Themis goes, Mira, can I talk to you outside for a second before I get going? I will see the rest of you later. Good night. I'm glad you're all safe. Don't worry about Sean. It's an ironclad contract. He'll be okay. I don't know what hippies are thinking when they... I don't know. Anyway, Mira, can I talk to you outside? Yeah. Okay. When's the last time you went to your house? My apartment? Your apartment. Not since that Rakshasa killed my neighbor. And did the messenger god drop you off there? I don't remember. I think you did, right? That's when you guys got in touch with me? And your cats are here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I couldn't have left Osiris and Isis. No, of course not. Yeah, I would move out uh, quickly. (laughs) Yes, that was the plan. That's what we literally just agreed to. I know. But just because you have so much stuff going on around you, I think you should move out sooner rather than later. So I would like to take you over there, pick up your stuff and bring you back before anything. Oh, you mean like right now? Yeah. I'm just worried about having to go back there ever again if the messenger god knows where you live. Okay, yeah. I'm going to tell the others. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Just let them know real quick and uh, Uh, I'll meet you in the car. Okay, great. So, yeah. Themis says I need to pick up my stuff right now. Do you need help? I mean, yeah, that would be nice. (laughs) Uh, I can't do much about my own life and my own shit, but I can at least help out with yours and maybe as sort of a sorry for, you know, trying to have you... I was possessed at the time, but you know what I mean. So you go... What about you, Mirabelle? Or do you stay? I guess I'll go and help because, you know, Bailey's not going to want us on her date. True. So you all go and you you pack up her stuff really quickly, load it in. And at some point, Themis is like, look, leave the bed, whatever. We'll buy it. We'll... No, it's just we're only taking the stuff that I can carry and clothes because those are expensive. Yeah, that stuff. Uh, You know, you have to go back up and down the stairs past where the stain is. They tried to to wash out the blood and they couldn't. And at one point, Maribel and Cecil are downstairs waiting in the car as you're making one final pass through. And Themis walks up to you and like kind of spins you around a little bit. And she puts her hands underneath your arms and picks you up so you're face to face with her. And she goes, you know, I was kind of hoping that you and I would have a moment alone while we moved you out. But your friends are downstairs, so we don't have any time to have a real conversation. I would be interested in possibly seeing a movie. You seem like you're uh, maybe interested as well. Yeah. And your feet are literally three feet off the ground. <laughs> I'm cool with that. <laughs> okay. There's um, the ghost yes, and now I, a titan. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I'd like a movie. I like you. I like you too. And she gives you a really deep, passionate kiss as you're dangling in the air. And we're going to go out of that scene over to the art show where there's all these people around and Mark is there and he's in a suit and he looks delicious. Like he looks wonderful. <laughs> and he walks up. He says, oh, I was afraid you weren't going to make it. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Oh, me too. I, uh, I truly almost did not make it. <laughs> it's crazy. And Bailey's very aware that she is severely underdressed. Well, let's, let's go inside and see what Emily has been up to. And he puts his arm out. Of course. Uh, oh, you want me to like, yeah, take a link. Oh my gosh. Let's go in. Okay. All right. (laughs) So you walk in and there are all these really large pictures. There's a bunch of nudes. There's a bunch of, you know, pastoral kind of pictures. Emily's looking at several of them. She's in a long sparkly dress. And she sees you and she goes, oh, Bailey, it's so nice to see you. And Mark, oh, I'm glad you get to see my work. It's beautiful. Oh, I can't wait. See, one piece didn't make it. I I just got a new commission just a few 
like days ago that I'm working on that'll be in the next show. Uh, it, uh, it, it's, it, oh, what? there, there what? he is. Oh. And uh, he says, uh, Richard, come over here and meet Bailey, my, my tenant and friend. And you turn around and it's <laughs> and he goes, Bailey, it's nice to meet you. <sighs> All the color which I'm melanated, so this is serious <laughs> right into my face. <laughs> Very serious. Do I have to do a resolve check? On that? Not yet. Uh, okay. So he puts out <laughs> his hand to shake your hand. Just, I'm just moving like a, like a robot, like I'm disassociating from all things around. Do, I am trying to be like, trying to look at his, his face though, like... Does his face look human or am I tri like, or tripping? Like, I'm like, I know, I know what he is. And he wasn't, you said he was like mostly mouth in the front or right. something. And several like really tall and right. yeah. huge, huge. So I'm just like, I, yeah, just, I do shake his hand, but I remember the bruise. <laughs> so once you touch his hand, the room stops, like everyone stops, time stops. And you see that there is blood coming out of the eyes and noses and mouths and of all the other people around you, Mark and Emily included. And he says to you, I'm so glad that we're friends. It's nice to meet a new person. And then he lets go of your hand and the room goes back to what it was a second ago. Can you roll me a resolve check now? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I just... Wait, oh fuck. I keep using this dice. It landed on this uh, little <laughs> dot. What the heck does that mean on the 10? That's a, that's a 10. That's a 10? Or a zero. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a 10. So, the other one was, was a 5. One? The other one. So 15. So 15 The other one saved me. Yes. Uh, Right. So, so I still take damage. Uh, you're fine. I'm like eager I mean, to be hurt as here. fine as you can be, but you. I you know, <laughs> well, the thing is that I, you I take do one have. Point. I don't remember why I did this, but kind of high occult. So I'm kind of I'm interested in engaging with this and uh, taking on the <laughs> wounds if needed. Yeah. Okay. But ouchy and uh, scary. So yeah, he stands there and he's talking with all of you, and uh, we're gonna go away from that scene. <laughs> and Sean is loading up the U-Haul. They grabbed a truck and filled it up with a bunch of stuff and jumps in the front car. Him and Freedom and Sally start driving south towards Los Angeles, much more flush with cash. And then we go over to the ruins of the Holy Roast which has been having earthquakes lately for some reason. And in the center of where the building used to be, a hand burst out through the ground. And that's where we're going to end this episode and this season of Otherworld Seattle. Uh, oh my. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. my. Oh boy. Goodness. So thank you all so much. I hope you had fun this season. I know I did. Uh, where can we find all of you wonderful people? Let's start with Jay. Hi, y'all. Jay Holtham here. You can find me on the social machines where you do the social things uh, at Jay Holtham in all those places. And you could also sometimes find me playing games on Happy Jack's RPG and It's Probably Okay's Twitch channel. Hi, I'm Pooja, and you can find me on Twitter at L.A. Daisy Girl. That's L-A-D-E-S-I Girl. Pretty much all the other socials as Forgotten Saves. I also sometimes play RPGs on Happy Jacks RPG. It's probably OK's Twitch channel and elsewhere on the interwebs. If you want to find out more, you can follow me on Twitter. Hey, I'm Mac, and uh, wow, this has been a hell of a season. Um, but uh, you can find me online as at Strange Like That, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebooks, and my website. Hello, I'm Saint or Saint Spider, and uh, <laughs> I'm also exhausted, but had a great time. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Saint Spider TV. So that's uh, S A I N T S P I D E R TV. And yeah, just I'm being real casual there. 
Hey, I'm Michelle Otis, and you can find me on Twitter at Mishulu. That's M-I-C-H-U-L-H-U. Uh, you can find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects through Plate Mail Games on Drive Through RPG, or subscribe to the whole catalog through Battle Bards. And I am Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games, all one word on Twitter. You can find the show at 12 Sided Stories, the number 12 Insided Stories on both Twitter and Instagram. If you want to help us out, you can join our coffee or our Patreon, or you can give a shout out or give us a review. Any of those things are very helpful. We hope you enjoyed this season. We really did. And, uh, you know, next week will be our talk about this season and everything that happened. Thank you very much for listening, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. 